Hey everybody, how's it going? Just lit a roaring fire in the old power saw shop. Thanks for coming back to hang out. I am loving the question of the day series. Sometimes I've been calling it question of the week, but it is question of the day because we do multiples of them. This one I think warrants another video. Tony Shells from beautiful central British Columbia asked me, Tin Man, He's building power saws and he wants to know the different HS carburetors. Uh, what do the numbers mean on them? And do I know uh, the flow characteristics and fueling capabilities of some of them? I do not have scientific data on the which ones flow better, but I do know quite a bit about these. And I can tell you from my experience, the different part numbers on them and what they do. Have you ever built a saw and wondered if it has the right carburetor on it? In this video, I'm going to talk about my experiences with carburation and mainly the HS series Tillotsons. If you pop the hood on old home lights, they have these. Old Husky, some stills, um, 266s, 272s, all those saws have a variant of this. They all pretty much look the same. The parts are interchangeable, but they aren't the same. Okay, now, Tony sent me pictures of various saws that he has and I'm gonna insert them here. I want you to look at each one and it tells you the saw and the model of carb and then let's talk about that. Okay, first saw has a Tillotson S163A, it is a Husqvarna 61. That is the smallest carb that you generally see on Husqvarna's. I have one right here. It has a smaller Venturi and it's just a smaller carburetor in general. It has a really small main jet. Those are really suited to what they're on, 60 to 65 cc saws. I've never put one on a 70 cc saw, but those are kind of the mainstay of that class of saw. I'm gonna show you one after we're gonna to break to the bench and I'll show you the differences between these carbs. But that is a good carb for 60 to 65 cc. You could put it on a 55 cc saw if you're looking for a bigger carb perhaps, but that is the kind of entry level size. Now notice it starts with a one, okay? My understanding of the Tillotson carbs or what I've noticed, and I don't know if this is the truth, but the 1 series is the smaller Venturi carb. The 2 series is the bigger Venturi carb. The next one is a Johnson at 630. That has an S218. I wrote down all the numbers here on a cheat sheet so I wouldn't mess anything up. That has a bigger carburetor. That is also a 60cc saw like the 61 Rancher. The question is why? Well, that's a newer saw, a newer design more or less than the Husky. And the later Husky 61s have a bigger carb or seem to from what I've noticed. As John Sered, John Sered was getting the newer technology before Husqvarna and they would get the bigger, newer carbs first. Because John Sered was a smaller line than Husqvarna in most areas. So, um... The 218A is a good carb if you want to go to the next step and you want a little bit bigger Venturi and a little bit better fueling capabilities, um, that carb will do the job without overdoing it. Okay, so this Johnson at 630 has close ports, a little bit hotter timing numbers, runs quite a bit stronger than a 61 Husky. That carb was fit on there for a reason. Next one, Johnson at 670 Super, that has an S230C. That's getting into the big boy carbs, um, bigger main jet, same size Venturi as the 218. I believe it's like a 17 and a half mil Venturi on those. Um, the 163 has like a 14 and a half if I remember correctly. So the Super 2 is a newer saw. That is the last in the line of 670s. And um, John Sered never put a 272 top end on their 670. The 670 is a 266. 
they kept putting bigger carbs on or, or better carbs in the line to try and keep up with the newer saws that Husky had is what I believe. And the last one is a Johnster at 920, 87 cc. Now you notice that had an S219 on it. It's a two series body with the bigger orifice or the bigger Venturi and a big main jet, but that is a limited carburetor. That is an old style two series carb. 181s have a carb very similar to that on them. And uh, so that is a limited version. Now let's, let's go to the bench and look at some of these carbs and I'll show you how you can quickly look at the carb and know whether it makes more oomph. Also friends, I grabbed some of my junk saws here. This is a newer 266 Husqvarna. This saw here has an S255A. That is the wrong carb for a 266. It has the side the side screw on it for adjusting. Uh, on these saws, the screw was generally attached to the body of the saw. So this thing is, that carb should be off a 268 or an early 272. Um, but that's the biggest, baddest carb you can put on one of these stock. You can put other carbs on, we'll talk about that. But that 255A is, is a bigger carb. And again, it's a two series and it has a higher number. It's a 55 versus the 218, uh, the 670 had a 230. As the numbers get bigger, it's a newer series carb is often what I notice and they often feel a little bit better. That doesn't mean you need one though. This is a 630 Super 2, it's a junk saw. Um, it does run really well. This saw here has an S, 256A, so that's an even newer carburetor than 255. And same thing, this saw has the adjustment screw on the carb and not on the body of the saw. Okay, now this saw being a Johnser Ed, this doesn't have the hole drill for the side adjuster screw. Also, when you pull the choke on this, it puts it into high idle. That is the correct carburetor for this. And again, this is only a 60cc saw. So you might ask yourself, why would that 60cc saw have such a big carb? Because that's a Super 2. Like I said, just like the 670, as they got newer, they got bigger carburetors. Okay, that's just part of the thing that they did. Now I find on these little saws, the bigger carburetors, they seem to go a little bit better. Um, but a big carburetor is not always the ticket. And we're going to talk about that. Lastly, this is a 1989 630 Super. This is one of my saws. This thing's ported to the moon. I pretty much did everything I could do to it. This, is, this thing's not so. I'd like to recreate it sometime um, on the channel just because it's a really good build. Not the easiest to live with. This has a 225A. Older saw, lower number. This carburetor fuels and works absolutely perfect in this saw. So, once again, that's kind of how you know the numbers. I'm going to bring you guys in and let's look at these carburetors on the bench. Okay. Carburetor numbers. This is another nerdy thing, but this is important if you're going to work on saws because you are inevitably going to need a carburetor for a saw. Let's see if we can get this to focus. Focus, focus. There we go. Okay. HS163A. Okay. This is the earliest carb you're going to find on a lot of the, the newer style Huskies from the 80s and that. Your 163, 66, 162, all those. Okay. Notice the size of Venturi. It's really small. Okay. It tapers in. The main jet does not protrude, it is just a hole drilled in the body, okay? That's how they did it in the old days. These are really good carbs, okay? And I'm going to talk about where I've used these and what you get out of it. This one here, this is a HS131B, and again, there's your governor. Okay, if you have that on the side and you notice your saw won't rev out and it gets rich at higher RPM, 
That's because it's got a governor. Now, this is off of a home light. Now, notice. Most of the old saws have a small venturi. This one is even smaller than this one. This is an older style car, okay? Like I said, as they get newer, they tend to get bigger venturis, but that doesn't mean you get more fuel. That's just how they did it. What do we got here? Okay, this is a 210. Notice, bigger Venturi than the Husky Carb. Can you guys see that? It is slightly bigger. But again, it's governed, okay? This is the carb you'll find on like uh, that 380 that I put that pipe on has one. The L77. You can tell right away, this linkage, this linkage right here is an old style Husky linkage and... It has the carbs, you know, it has the idle on the carb. So none of these have provisions for idle on them. Actually, this one does, the old, the old home lights. But some of them, you can't exchange the jets in all these. Okay, some of them, the jets are wider. Some of them, they're narrower. So if you're going to swap a carb, this is all the stuff. Some of them, the chokes flip down. Okay, some of them flip up. Some of them come out on this side. You can modify them uh, with a little bit of redneck ingenuity, but like this carb here, this is an S138A. So if this is a one series and it follows the pattern that I already set, some of these are really dirty. They're just from my parts. Does that have the small Venturi in it? It appears to, doesn't it? Here. Okay, so that was the small Venturi, but this one, this one has a main jet that protrudes into the body of the carb. Okay, so this carb, if you could get it flowing more air, you could change the main jet if you really wanted to. I don't know what this is off of. Um, might be off of a home light or who knows. Okay, next. What do we got here? 224. This is an early 266 carb. Notice the size of the Venturi. It's very large. Okay. Hope you guys can see that. It does taper in still, but compared to... Compared to the 163... I don't know if you guys can see that. There we go. Where are we? I want to show you guys, okay? Look at the difference. It's like three millimeters bigger. That's why you'll notice the newer saws, they pull a little bit more RPM. Part of that is, a lot of it is the carburetor. Now, right here, this is an OEM 288 carb. Okay? Notice it has... The main jet that is removable, it's a 0.72. Actually, no, it's this one right here. You guys get what I'm saying, though? You can remove the main jets in the newer, bigger carburetors. This is off of a 288. This is a 283B. Some of them don't say S anymore. Again, so it's a two series body. It has the bigger Venturi, but it's a two, it's a 283B. This carburetor right here will make more fuel than all of these. Okay. So like I said, if it's a number one, it's a small body carb. The bodies are the same, but the Venturi, it could be a 13 mil, 14 mil or 15. I think I might be out to lunch on those numbers, but you guys understand what I'm saying. All the 1 Series, like this one, have small Venturis. All the 2 Series, like this one, have a large Venturi. And usually a removable main jet. Okay, now let's talk about... And I have more friends. Uh, every, time, every time I junk a saw or I break a saw down, I put the carb in my carb bin. And 
keep it for further further use. And I I I usually. I usually store them by series if it's a one series or a two series because I make carburetors from parts all the time. Okay, so you're building power saws, you're porting saws. That's awesome. But here's one thing that a lot of people, they, they ask me or they're just not sure. How do I know if I have the right carburetor on my saw? Well... Friends, I'm going to tell you something right now. You're not going to know if your carb is good unless you try it. Run the saw for a while with the carburetor that's on it. 90% of the time, friends, you're not going to need a bigger carb. In fact, a bigger carb will often stifle your results. Your porting intake timing, case capacity, um, you know, how many degrees you're sucking and how many degrees you're squishing that bottom end, all that... You know, your case compression, that all matters when it comes to how your carburetor works. The size of your intake. If you have if you have a big hogged out intake, some guys do that, um, your saw might run a little bit better with a smaller carb. Why? Because those big intakes, they're not going to pull as hard as a smaller intake. And uh, that's a fact that I've learned, friends. It's just a thing. This saw here that has another wrap on it. This saw here, friends, let's talk about this. I hope you guys can see it. I wanna tell you guys a perfect example. There you go, you guys can see that. This saw here, this is my saw. Uh, this saw here, this is a 266 build on an SE, okay? This is a 1980, it's a 1983 266 SE. Well, guess what carbs on this? The 162A HS, the small carb, the one that nobody wants, right? You guys have seen this saw run. Uh, I'll have to put a link at the end to one of the videos of this saw running. This saw is a contender. Now, this saw was not built to be uh, a highlight reel showstopper. This is a good work saw. I didn't put a bigger carb on it because after running it, this saw runs beautifully. It starts nice, it idles, and it tunes properly. It probably could have a little more power on the top with a bigger carb, but at the detriment of some bottom end reliability, okay? I don't think that this saw needs a bigger carb at all. And I've been running it this way year after year, and it's just a good build, okay? If this was a 272 build with a bigger carb, I, you know, I might want a bigger carb if it was a 272 build. Might! I will always try the carb that's on there. Okay, now the opposite of that is this saw. This is another 266 built. Uh, the intakes open on this saw for, I don't know, about six more degrees than that one. This saw has way more compression, it has a pop up, it has a higher exhaust roof. Now, this saw is not a good idler, friends. It'll idle, but you have to turn the idle up. And this saw is very picky to tune, okay? Now, part of the reason for that is my intakes open too long and I have a big carburetor, okay? But on the pipe, when you're cutting, uh, this thing's quite a bit faster than that one. But that one, that one spends more time on my truck than this one because this one, I have to be in the mood to run this saw because it's a saw that I gotta go, ee, 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 you know, all the time. So. If I put a smaller carb on that saw, it might run better. It won't be as fast, but it might be more day-to-day -day reliable. Who knows? Maybe we'll do that sometime. Now, so you've built your ported saw and you think you need a bigger carburetor, okay? Now, one thing, if you are putting a carburetor with an impulse line off of another saw, if your stroke isn't the same or your boring stroke isn't the same, sometimes you can get into a little bit of trouble. Um, those short stroke 266s do not like an impulse line carb unless it's the 270 or the, uh, the Johnson Red 670 version. Um, I find most of the impulse lined carburetors like a 390 or a 372 carb. My experience with those on 266 builds, they don't get enough impulse, which makes them kind of erratic. So... You're better off to just go with a bigger Tillotson, in my opinion, in my experience. Now, 
how do you know how do you know if you need a bigger carb okay idling your tunability a good power saw build to me full rich to full lean you know when you go all the way till it wants to die and all the way till it wants to die squeaker in the middle and then just slightly past that richer and it's good that's a good carburetor an improperly sized carb often you you're turning that screw one and a half turns to get full rich to full lean then you set it at idle and it's still it doesn't really act correctly it tends to load up or just not come down to idle to me that often is the sign of the wrong carb on a saw okay too big of a carb is often a problem too small of a carb you just won't make the outright power but you'll have a good running saw too big of a carb creates way more issues i find than too small of a carb and i'm going to cover that after this part top end when you have too big of an intake say because we're i'm talking ported saws there's really no reason to change your carb model or size on a stock saw there really isn't now on a ported saw you put a big carburetor or you have a big carburetor on your saw and you've now your stock intake timing was 150 degrees and you make it 160 162 meaning it's open for 10 12 degrees longer and you've hogged the intake out the intake's giant now right a giant intake's gonna flow more air well friends I'm in the airflow business, that's all I do. I bend and move and twist air all day. Uh, I draw blueprints, that kind of stuff. That's not how air works. Uh, velocity and pressure is the name of the game. So often, a longer intake saw with a hogged out intake will not pull the same amount of volume of air because it's getting lazy, friends, okay? You want suction. It's like if you breathe, if you suck through a straw in your hand, a small straw, and you suck, it'll stick to your hand. But if you have a big tube, you know, you don't have the same amount of suction. And that's kind of how an intake works. So you have a big carburetor. Those bigger carbs usually need more pull over the main jet. So what ends up happening, and I've seen this, and I've experienced this, you end up having a saw where your jets are turned out too far to get it rich. You think you have an air leak, but you don't. You're, you're really working your, your jets capabilities. Maybe you have it out two turns, but there's no air leak, but you're like, it's out two turns. Well, it kind of runs okay. It's kind of finicky. That's usually the sign that you have too much carb on your saw for the porting. And right there, if you go a smaller size carb, often the saw will just live life better. It'll be, you'll, you'll tune it less, you'll, you'll have an easier time getting it to idle, and often you'll have, you know, seven eights out on your high jet, and it's doing its thing. So, be aware of that. If you have a carburetor, if you've ported a saw, and your carburetor is really taking a lot of turns uh, to, to tune, and you don't have an air leak, you're not tuning around an air leak, often that's a sign that you've picked their improper carburetor or your intake's getting lazy and I know there's arguments online about this but the the larger intake saws like that John Sered that I just showed you that saw is incredible on the pipe up here at the highest rpm that saw is amazing but everywhere else it it's a little bit of a of it's a saw that you got to give special care to which makes it not a work saw. That is more of a race saw than a work saw. It's a very fast cookie cutter. It's very strong, but you can't throw it down idling. And I have to tune that saw many times in a cutting session. And the reason why it's got a big carburetor and the intakes open a long time. So I hope that makes sense. So that's what I know about HS carburetors. Number one is a small bodied carburetor. Number two is a large bodied carburetor, and I'm talking about the Venturi. And the higher the numbers, if it's a 218, it's an older 2 Series. If it's a 255, 256, 270, uh, 283, those are newer carburetors for newer saws. Those typically will give you the best fueling if you're going for a hot rod. On the smaller saws, the, one, the, the 60cc saws run a 163. 
they feel really well. My 266 has a, two, has a 163 on it, friends. And people have remarked at how strong that saw is. It's strong. It's really strong. And it is so easy to tune and live with. It's a better saw than my Johnson Ed because it's easier to live with. And again, I always say it, I build work saws. There is so much more to building a work saw than making highlight reel cookie cuts. In fact, you guys really never see that on this channel because I'll do that to test function, but that's only this much of an equation that's this big. Um, a saw has to start idle and tune correctly to be a work saw or it's not getting worked. It's gonna sit on a shelf. Tony, thanks for sending that question. I hope, again, another nerding out video. You guys love the last one where I was drawing pictures and I like this kind of stuff. So there you go, HS Carburetors. Tony said when he gets a reply from Tillotson, um, he'll share it with me. I hope that's what it does mean because that's always been the system I use. Maybe that's not how they do it, but I've always noticed. A number one, it's a small Venturi. Number two, it's a big Venturi. Thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later. Hey everybody, it's time for question of the day. Got a good question from Josh Reifenberger. Josh sent me an email. He bought a 266 SE Husqvarna. He said it did start and run, but it was low on compression. So he put a new piston and ring for Meteor in, rebuilt the carb, new gaskets and seals. The saw will start and idle on the bench, but if you put a bar and chain on it, it doesn't run properly this is a super common problem i've had it on the channel uh if you go back and look at me playing with that 268 that was sent in by jamie barking spider that saw had the same problem it ran fine on the bench it started it tuned it idled then when i put a bar and chain on it and touched the trigger it would just bog and die what was the problem with that saw that saw needed new crank bearings what happens is when you put a bar and chain on the sprocket it puts a little bit of load on the clutch and that pulls on the end of the crank if you have loose or worn bearings often they will move and guess what you have an air leak at the crank seal so what i would do with that saw is i would take some carb cleaner get the saw idling on the bench no bar and chain and spray around the crank seal and try and get it behind the uh, oil pump on the PTO side. And I bet you that saw will die. If it does, unfortunately, you're going to have to split that saw and put new bearings in it. Bearings are cheap. You can always get gaskets from Wolf Creek Saw Shop. Um, the whole job will take about an hour or two. The problem is you do need a case splitter. Um, you could use heat and a uh, press if you have one, but... A crankcase splitter is the best way. You can buy them for about 50 bucks online. And I have numerous videos on doing bottom ends. So there you go, Josh. That's probably your issue. I've had that happen many times. Anyways, keep sending the questions and I'll keep putting them at the end of the videos. Thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later.